So a while ago I made my own cover version of the song Paper Boats from the game Transistor by Supergiant Games, the same people who made Bastion. I've received a lot of good reception so far on that cover, so thank you so much for everybody who likes it and favorites it and shares it with everybody. I'm really glad everybody likes it even though it's actually a pretty simple cover. I was requested by a commenter named Waco Red? Joaco Red X? Waco Red X? I am so sorry. I did not mean to mispronounce your name. In real life, I have a very unpronounceable name and I feel bad when I can't pronounce people's names. But he or she requested a tutorial on how I did my piano arrangement for that. The tutorial is going to be a lot easier for you to follow if you already are familiar with the basics of piano. Um, which keys or what note, things like that. And it's gonna be even easier for you if you know how chords work. If you know how to play chords off the top of your head, like if you give, I give you the name of one and you can play it right now. I tried to make this tutorial accessible for all levels. So the nice thing about it being a video is that if you're a beginner, you're not quite getting the stuff I'm telling you yet, you can keep replaying the video over and over again until you get it. That's all the piano arrangement is, or the instrumental is, it's just simple chords, just played in a variety of ways. Because basically I just started with whole notes and moved my way to quarter notes and eighth notes to make an octaves and things to make it more powerful sounding. I just let it build. And to me, those are usually the songs that I find most beautiful, which is what influences how I do covers. I feel songs that have the simplest melody or the simplest um, accompaniment, simplest chords, repetitive patterns, I feel they can be the most impacting and the most likely to bring a tear to your eye. I just felt it would be a very impacting version of the song to just sing it and play it with just a piano. Sort of like an acoustic version. I will tell you up front, I do not teach you how to sing with the piano, just because one, I don't think it's that hard to get, two, Learning how to sing with any instrument just takes practice until you get it. That's at least how I learned it. And third, it's a moderately slow song, and the way Ashley Barrett sings the vocal, she sings it kind of freestyle. Like, if you listen to it, she's not just singing along with the tempo. She's kind of almost like sing-talking over it, kind of... Like the moon that makes the tides. Not like that, but... You know what I mean? She's not really landing on these claps. So that's the nice thing about the vocals is you can play it up, switch it to your singing style. And the nice thing about my personal accompaniment is that it's so basic. It's honestly so basic and so easy that if you're more advanced or you want to play with it a little bit, make it more fancy, then you have a nice bass to start with that you can just start messing with and tweaking. So without further ado, here's a tutorial. For a point of reference, C is this note here or here. Basically, it's always going to be the note immediately to the left of these two black keys because you have a set of three and you have a set of two. So these two black keys immediately to the left. And after that, the notes on the keyboard just follow the white keys. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. We're going to start with the verses. So the chords for the verse are as follows. You have D minor, you have F, C and A. And for both verses, you're going to repeat those chords three times. So I'm going to start with my left hand. The notes for the left hand just follow the chords of the right hand. So first note you're going to start off with is D. Then you have F, two white keys above it. I use it with my thumb. And that middle finger is already over the C. and then pinky on A, which is two white keys below C. The way I use my fingers to play the notes changes all the time. Certainly you can adjust the fingers to your level of comfort or expertise, but this is just how I learned to play piano. So again, that's D, hand. I'll explain the chords. So you have D minor, which is D, F, A. So you play them together. And then you'll move your thumb down one note to C, and C, F, A will make F, the F chord. 
Now keep in mind, it doesn't matter what order you play those notes in necessarily, as long as they're all present. This is actually inversion. The basic F chord would actually be F, A, C up here. And that's how you create inversions, by taking the bottom note, moving it up top. It's same chord, just played in a different way. You have D. Move your thumb down, you get F. Then you're going to move these top notes down. We get C, C, E, G. And then you'll move your thumb up to this black key and your pinky up one white key. And you'll get C sharp, E, A to make it the A chord. So I'll go over that again. You have D minor, move the thumb down, F, move the top two fingers down, you get C, and then move the thumb and pinky up and get A. So together, starting on the D, you have Again, you have D minor, F, C, A. So I play that sequence three times, just single notes. So first time. Second time. And then the third time. And the left hand's a little different. So it's the same so far. And then here I go. You see what I did there? So on the A, I just play the A chord on the right hand twice, so... And then I play the A on the left hand as a half note and then two quarter notes to lead into the moving quarter notes of the left hand for the chorus. So... Make sense? It helps just transition better into it. So to get so for that last measure with the A you have I'll play the verse sequence for that third time again. So you have D minor play the whole verse from the top. Okay, now on to the chorus. So for the chorus, the chords are as follows. You have B e flat, A, F, and then F again. And then you have B e flat again, and then you have E. 
then you have A minor and A major. So the way I play the chorus the first time, for the left hand, I still follow the notes that correspond with the chord on the right hand, but I play them as quarter notes. So I follow the beat the, or the tempo. So like this. So I have B flat here, which is the last key of the set of three black keys on the keyboard. So you see how it kind of follows that tempo. And then I move immediately to the left to A. Then I go down two white keys to F. you got B flat which is again this last key of the black keys B and F so I just play these as whole notes so they last the entire four counts of the measure and then I move all my fingers down one half step or to the key immediately next to it to the left in this case and you'll get your A. So notice how earlier for the verse we played A like this. Now we're moving that A down to make an inversion. Then you're going to move the middle note down one half step and the top note one up one half step. So you get F. So again, watch my fingers. B flat, shift down, And then move middle down, top up, F. So the left hand's really making all the motion here. So when you play it together, you have B flat, A, F. And then I re articulate on this measure. So again, then for the second half of the chorus, starting with the left hand for the next half of the chorus, you start on B flat again, still playing quarter notes. And you see where my pinky is naturally resting? It's resting immediately to the right of these two black keys. That's E. That's where you want to go to. Well, eh, that's where you're going to want to go next. So you have B or B flat. Then you have E. And then where my index finger is, the A, you're going to play that. Watch my fingers. And for the right hand, you have the same B flat chord. For the notes of the next chord, it's kind of a jump compared to the last chords we've played. You're going to move your pinky down from F to E, your index finger here to B, so this is B flat, and you have B, and then your thumb to G sharp or A flat, which is this middle black key of the three set. So here. So again, starting on B flat, you go from here to here. And 
then you're gonna have A minor, which is just a matter of moving these bottom two fingers up one half step or one key immediately next to it. So you have A minor, A, C, E. And then the next chord after that is a major. And a major chord is what I'm referring to when I refer to a chord by a single single letter, nothing else. A minor chord is just the middle note moved down a half step. So to make it major again, you're just gonna move it back up a half step. So you had A, C, E to make A minor, and now you have A, C sharp, E to make A. So from the top of that second half, you have Okay, let's try that with both hands. So from B flat, B flat, E, A minor, A major. So it's nice because since the A minor and A major chord are have the same root, you're just playing the A the whole time because it's a root. Okay, one more time and then we'll play the chorus from the beginning. So let's play the chorus from the beginning. So you have B flat, A, F. Now what comes next? And then you go to the verse again after that. So for the second verse, I play it almost exactly the same as the first verse, but I add an octave to my left hand, which means adding the same note either higher or lower. So for me, I do lower because I want to give it more depth. The beginning of the song was a lot more light and simple and pretty, but now I want to add some darkness to it. So. See how powerful that sounds? And I only do that on the first note of each measure. So for example, you start up with your D, and I have D up here, which I was playing before, and D down here. So I play it together, and then finish out the measure just with the thumb. Does that make sense? So playing through the sequence, but with this variation, you have exactly the same and again I changed the last measure to lead into the chorus playing it in the style of how I'm gonna be playing the chorus so let me go through the entire second verse so you, you're right here
chord as quarter notes. So I'm not just holding it up for four counts anymore, I'm actually playing a note for each count of the measure. So one, two, three, four. Make sense? And what I'm doing with the left hand is I play that octave, so you've got that A octave there, and I'm playing on what's called the offbeat. So normally when you count a tempo, it's like this. And that's called the on beat because that's the defined, I suppose, notes that you're clapping on. But all the space in between are, has room for off beats. So this is on, off, on, off, on, off, on, off. So they're wedged in between. So I guess it's kind of like rap where it's like, uh, 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 uh. That's an off beat. They're singing on an off because it's not landing on this beat. So basically, the nice thing that you're going to be able to play with here is it's almost like you're playing it like eighth notes. So this is, you have the A chord up here on the on beat, and you have your A on your thumb right here on the off beat. So in the end, it just sounds like this. So instead of, I guess, thinking it of two different hands, in reality, you really just have one and two. No different if you were playing something like the notes are just further away. So let me play the third um, repetition of that verse real quick. So D, D minor. out of nowhere and I repeat that same pattern for the chorus. Just because we've covered the notes already I'm not going to go over how the second chorus goes I'm just going to play through it real quick just remember to add that octave here on your pinky. So here's how the second chorus would go. kind of doing you have to do like a little bit of a skip because you have one and two and three and four and one so it sounds like you're playing just like quarter notes on that thumb but when you change notes you're gonna have to do an eighth note change because the offbeat ends up being the very last eighth note of the measure if that makes sense because you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So the last note of this offbeat pattern ends on an eight because you're playing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you're playing on those even notes. But since you technically play two eighth notes at the beginning by going, so my thumb plays twice at the very beginning, two eighth notes. If I play just the thumb, you have to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one. It's not that hard to get in my opinion, you just kind of have to practice it a little bit so you're not tricking yourself. That's my bag. So let me play through the second chorus one more time. <laughs> B flat. Again, just like the second verse, you're just articulating the pinky on every measure. So you, the thumb's really playing the whole time, and the bottom pinky is just holding. Okay, so now for the bridge, I guess you would call it, where she keeps singing, I will always find you.
The nice thing is you're gonna be on D the whole time. The pattern is just gonna be a little weird to play. I'm basically just following that guitar that you hear. The thumb on the right hand is always gonna be on A. It just makes for interesting chords because your other fingers up here are gonna be moving. If you have just kind of one drone note playing the whole time and just kind of playing around with the notes that are above it, it creates some really interesting chords. So that's what I wanted to do here. And it shows that you don't always have to play in um, harmonies that go up a third. So again, your thumbs are glued here. <laughs> What your other fingers are going to be doing with this right hand is... So the pattern that your right hand is going to be following the entire time is... So a little bit slower. Now just add that thumb below it and you're good. Now when you add that thumb below it, it's gonna be playing a very steady beat. So you have one and two. Basically, you articulate it with every new note. So you have D, C sharp, F sharp, E. The D on your left hand is going to be a little tricky to place with everything that's going on up here. So the rhythm is. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and make sense? One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and so basically you're playing the first count and all of the offbeats of the measure. So one and 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 one and So all these notes kind of interlock with each other, not perfectly, but that's the best way I can explain it. I'll play it slowly for you guys so you can try to get the rhythm. If not, just keep practicing, you'll eventually get it. Again, that last measure is a little different. So playing that together, you get I'll play the last repetition of the bridge again. And again, that's leading up to how the third chorus is going to be played. I completely forgot to mention, I usually play the left hand with the octave again. And the D, the bottom D, will follow the same pattern as this A. And of course, the chords for the chorus are exactly the same. At the end, the chorus is played two times. So the first time, the way I play the left hand is the thumb is playing in eighth notes now. So the right hand is still playing on quarter notes following the beat. Basically, it sounds like this. So the whole time your thumb is going like this. And while your pinky is still just playing the bottom note and holding it out for the measure.
And then for the last repetition of the chorus, I do the exact same thing, but your pinky on the bottom here is now playing in quarter notes. So it's gonna sound like this. Especially if you're not used to having your hands or your fingers spread this way to play piano, it might hurt or be a little strenuous for a little bit, but don't worry, you'll get it in time, unless your finger span is just really, really small. So you kind of have to get this kind of bouncy motion, kind of lifting motion, so your hand is flat when you play on the on beat, and then when you have to play the thumb on the off beat, you kind of... follow it with the chords. So going through the fourth repetition of that chorus, this is what it sounds like. So instead of doing this crazy little pattern or rhythm on that D where your thumb is on the left hand, I just switch back and forth between D and A, just straight like that. One and two and three and four and three. And you're going to repeat the bridge sequence twice, and I kind of just slow down the end of that last repetition to end the song, just so it ends up nice and pretty, and I try to soften my voice when I sing. So playing that together... See, I've ended it right there, so I just kind of just slow down, let it fade out on its own. I'll play it again for you. And you don't even have to play that very last note here if you want to. You can just go. Okay, so I'll play it first with just the piano, and then I'll play it trying to sing along with it.
I may or may not have had a Chick-fil-A spicy chicken sandwich before <laughs> I filmed this, so my voice might be a little messed up from that, so I apologize for that. Seconds march into the past The moments pass And just like that they're gone The river always finds the sea So helplessly Like you find me I hope you enjoyed that tutorial. This is the first tutorial for music that I've ever made, even though followers on my Vampire's Carmina channel, which is my old channel, have requested that I do a complete De La Butte by Rufus Wainwright tutorial for the longest time. I will get it. I know it's like years late. I'll get to it. Please let me know if you have any notes on how I can improve my music tutorials in the future. Again, this is my first time doing one, so I don't actually know if I've done a good job or not. And please let me know if you want any more tutorials on any of the covers I've done. I have a whole playlist called Boonan Covers, and it's just everything I've ever, ever covered. And I will be doing more transistor covers in the future. I've already done signals because I figured out the chords for that. I'm definitely not as good 
of a guitar player as I am a piano player, and even at piano I'm actually not that good. For my signals cover, it's just very simple strumming of the chords, and I know somebody's asked for the chords, so I'm gonna post them on there. One person who liked my signals cover did suggest that I should do spine and in circles. In circles I really want to do since there's a lot of simple instruments playing that I can just play multiple parts and do that thing where I have like me playing this instrument in one corner, me playing this instrument in the other corner. I've always wanted to do that. I kind of like smooth the groove and how he does his acapella covers. But thank you so much for watching. I hope you like, favorite this video, subscribe even if you're interested. I do a lot of crap on this channel. I do music, I do crafting, I do... I'm hoping to do vlogs, even though I haven't really gotten myself up to do it. Just anything I like is going on this channel, so check it out. I hope this tutorial helps you in learning how to play this song, and I will talk to you later. Bye!